Welcome to this month's episode of Warwick Classics Network's Ask an Academic, and we're doing this uh, video on the topic of Greek religion. Uh, now we've had a number of questions in from different teachers and school students, so I'm going to be hoping to cover a couple of those uh, today across three main topics. The first is just the, the nature of Greek religion, what kind of beast are we talking about? Second is thinking specifically about festivals, and we're going to be thinking about the Panathenia and the mystery cults at Eleusis. And then the third area is miasma pollution. So, to the nature of the beast, what is or how do we describe Greek religion? And I think this is often one of the most important aspects when you're covering it with your students and also one of the most difficult because it is going to be something completely outside of the experience of most of the modern day religions. Greek religion, fundamentally, the most important thing to know about Greek religion is that, as some scholars have put it, there is no such thing as Greek religion because there is no word in ancient Greek for religion. Religion comes from religio, the Latin word, but in the Greek there is not an agreed term that covers the ways in which the Greeks dealt with their gods. Coupled with this, there is also no central sacred text. There is no statement of core beliefs. There is nothing that we can look at in comparison to most modern religions and go, you are a believer in Greek religion if you believe in X or Y. And that is why most scholars of Greek religion tend to focus on actions rather than words and beliefs. What people do define them as followers of Greek religion rather than necessarily what they believe in. But how do we talk about belief then in a system that supposedly has no words for describing that religious belief and no set of principal statements or texts by, through which people identify themselves as believing together in a common religious uh, understanding of the world and of the divine. And I think the closest we can get in ancient Greek is the term theos non misdain. Now this breaks down into uh, believe, it's often translated in the gods, but the verb non misdain has a, at its root the word nomos. And nomos in ancient Greek is a really interesting word because it can be defined as custom or law. It's often something which is defined by the city-state or the community or the civic political body rather than, say, a, a, a group of religious authorities. And so if we're to translate that literally, we might want to say it translates, Theos and Mizdain translates as to uh, buy into and accept as customary the practices which the community accepts as customary vis-a-vis -vis the gods. And that gets at the heart of the, one of the most important aspects of Greek religion, which is that it is indivisible from community, political, civic interaction and life. Uh, religion seeps into and is fundamentally part of and is simultaneously defined by every other aspect of the life which ancient Greeks led. So, Theos and Mizdain would be my kind of way forward to suggest how we do talking about Greek religion and belief in the ancient Greek gods. And the other thing is that the Greeks were often saying to one another that they understood themselves to be all doing something similar. If we have a look at Herodotus' histories in Book 8, famously, the Athenian ambassadors talk about tohlenikon, the Greek thing. And what makes you Greek is common blood, common language, common religious customs and temples. Now, there's a problem with that example, and the Athenians are trying to persuade other Greeks that they should all bind together and act together. But there's something very important in the fact that if anything that they could choose to talk about, they choose to talk about common religious customs or temples. So while we have no explicit definition, no core set of prescribed beliefs, an understanding of Greek religion in which kind of what you do is defined by the community in which you operate, there was also clearly a sense that Greek religion was something that could perceivably bind the Greeks together as a, as a wider community as well. And the third thing that I would like to kind of emphasize in terms of getting across the nature of Greek religion is that despite there being ideas that Greek religion could identify you as part of the Greek world and that were, there were common religious customs and temples, we should never be fooled into thinking that Greek religion makes sense. It is not a coherent set of beliefs or practices. And trying to make it coherent, trying to get all the ends to fit together, always ends in tears. Greek religion was incoherent. 
it was flexible, it was improvisatory, right? it was adaptable, it was flexible, it changed constantly. And I think that is the other crucial aspect. That while there was a core set of ideas, beliefs, practices, actions that you could kind of recognize, uh, simultaneously every Greek realized the Greek religion was in a constant process of change, whether that's over time, whether that's over space, or whether that's even in relationship to individual gods. So those are the three things I would sum up uh, about the nature of Greek religion that it's absolutely crucial to get across to your students. First off, it is unlike anything they will have studied before in any modern religion of which they may well have some experience. This is a religion without identifiable creed or set text or even word to describe it. It is a religion which is bound up entirely with all sorts of other community practices, civic, political, as well as religious. And it's a religion which fundamentally does not cohere, which is constantly flexing, changing, uh, and which is constantly, in some ways, incoherent.